In this video, we're gonna do a Patreon requested tutorial of recreating the Ali Abdal subtitle text that you see in a lot of his shorts. As always, if you're a patron, you can download these project files and use it in your videos right now. First things first, open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can go up to file, then select new from project browser. We are gonna select the final cut title. I recommend leaving your preset and frame rate at whatever you typically like to edit with. And under your duration, you can set that to five seconds or so. From there, we'll push open. The first thing we need to do is go ahead and delete the title background and type text here layers. Once you've done that, we can go on down to our title tool and we can just type in whatever we want the default title to say. Once I've finished typing, I can push escape to get out of the text editor. Then we can go to our inspector and in here we can change the font, which we are gonna use the monster rat font. And we can also change the alignment, which I want it to be aligned in the center. After that, we can go up to our properties and find the position parameter. I'm just gonna right click on that and then select reset parameters. So now our text should be in the center of the screen. After that, let's go ahead and select our rectangle tool. Click and drag to roughly get the shape of your rectangle that you want. And I'm gonna leave it underneath so we can clearly see what's going on. It doesn't really matter where it is on the screen at the time you create it though. Now that we've done that, go on over into your shapes and then locate the geometry tab. Let's go ahead and drag up the roundness just a little bit so we barely have a rounded edge on each side of this rectangle. Then down at the bottom, you'll see this size parameter. If you click this down arrow, we can expand that so now we can individually adjust the width and the height but we don't wanna to have to manually adjust this every single time. So we're gonna use a powerful link parameter to do all the heavy lifting for us. Going to the right of the width parameter, go ahead and click on this little down arrow, then go to add parameter behavior and select link. Now all we need to do is drag in our text layer to this drop well. So now we're telling Motion that we want to link something about this title to our rectangle, but it doesn't quite know what we want to link, so we need to tell it what that is. Going to Compatible Parameters, we'll go to Object Attributes, Size, and Width. So now the width of our title is driving the width of our rectangle. Now I happen to like how it looks with a little bit of padding on the sides, so let's go to the X offset at the very bottom and just drag that up to a full 100. If you wanna go beyond that 100 value, you can actually just click and drag directly on the numbers and that will let you go as far as you want. Now that we've linked the width, we also need to link the height. So let's go ahead and double click on our link parameter and just call it link width. Then I'm going to push command D, which will allow me to duplicate that. And I'm just gonna rename this to be link height. From there, we need to first change which parameter is being linked from our title to the rectangle. So we'll go to compatible parameters, then we'll go down to object attributes, size, and this time we're gonna select height. However, you'll notice that our rectangle has been squished down in a weird way. That's because we're linking it to the wrong part of the rectangle. Right now, the height of the text is driving the width of our rectangle. So we need to change that. We'll go to target parameters, we'll go to object, shape, and then we're gonna select size and height. So now both the width and the height are being driven by our title. And what that means is we can write in whatever we want and the height and width are going to change automatically. So you can see that as I've changed the text here, that has changed the width on our rectangle. Now we need to get this rectangle to always move around with wherever we move our text because right now there are individual objects. So to do that, let's first place the rectangle underneath our text layer. Let's click and drag that down in our layers panel and that will place it underneath. After that, let's select our text, we'll go to the appearance, and let's just change the color down to black or maybe a really dark gray. Then from there, select your rectangle, go to behaviors, go to basic motion, and select align to. The align to parameter allows us to link the position of this rectangle to the position of our text. Selecting that align to parameter, let's just drag in our text layer. And just like that, you can see now that our text is driving the position of our rectangle automatically. Now I might give us just a little bit more padding inside of our height, 
That way our text can stand out just a little bit better and that is looking really nice. The last thing we need to do with this text is that we want it to start from kind of a light gray color and then move into this darker tone as the words are being spoken. Selecting our text, let's go up to behaviors, go down to text animation and select sequence text. The sequence text option allows us to essentially animate our text in different ways. One of those ways is we can change the color over time. So to do that, we'll go to parameter and we're going to add in a new parameter. We'll go to the face, which is driving the color of our text and select color. By default, it has gone to white. So essentially over time, we'll see that our text is kind of fading in, but we don't want it to be completely white. We want it to have a little bit of a darker gray color. So let's bring this down to a point where we're happy. That's looking pretty nice. And again, if we were to play through, we could see that over time, the different text is being darkened. As it is, it's darkening each individual character. And instead we want it to be the entire word. So to do that, we'll go over to animate and change it from character down to word. But you'll also notice that over time, it's slowly fading in each word. And you might like how that looks, but if you want it to look exactly like Ali Abdal's text, we need to change our spread. So if I drag that all the way to zero, now it's going to essentially start from no darkening to complete darkening all in one frame. The last thing we need to adjust on this animation is we want the very final word to be completely filled in for about a second or so. So let's go ahead and drag our playhead to the last second. Then let's locate this end offset parameter. I'm just gonna drag that up until that final two text gets filled in. So for this project, that's about 30 frames or so. So we've got our text all set up. We've got our rectangle set up. Now we might want to add just a little bit more polish over in Final Cut Pro. And one way to do that is to add a drop shadow. I'm gonna go on up here to our color settings and just add in the transparent background so we can clearly see what's going on. Then selecting the group that contains everything, we'll go on over to properties. Then we can locate this drop shadow option. I'm gonna go ahead and enable that. We'll push show. We could drag out the distance a little bit and the blur. And if you're feeling super cool, you could actually publish all of these parameters. So if I wanted to publish the drop shadow, we'll just click this down arrow and push publish. And you could continue to publish each and every option so you have them all available inside of Final Cut Pro. Now that everything is set up, let's go ahead and push Command S to save. And we can just call it the Ali Abdal subtitles and throw it into whichever category you like. I'll go ahead and put it into my tutorials category and push publish. So now that we've done all the hard work, we can go over into Final Cut Pro and reuse the same title over and over again. Here we are in Final Cut Pro. I'll just go on up to my titles. I'll locate my tutorials category, find the Ali Abdal subtitles and drag that down to the timeline. Now we might find that this text is too small. So I'll go ahead and just expand that. And you'll notice that the rectangle is growing in size as well. We could type in whatever we want and we would shorten it down according to the duration of our speech. So if we wanted the animation to play out a little bit faster, and if I were to push play, you can see how the text is filling in over time. If this video was helpful, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and you may wanna check out this video where I show you my brand new Pro Vertical plugin for Final Cut Pro. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.